Did you know that SpaceX has a plan to build a space station? It's true. Under NASA's Collaborations for Commercial Space Capabilities II program, one of the selected names was Space Exploration Technologies Corporation, or SpaceX. We all know this company for its bold, sometimes crazy, but always innovative ideas. And this time is no different. They're bringing to the table a concept that, until now, has mostly existed in science fiction, a space station with artificial gravity. So why does this matter so much? And more importantly, how would they do it? Living in space sounds amazing, right? But the whole weightlessness thing. It might look fun in movies, but being in microgravity for a long time isn't great for the human body. Without gravity, our muscles and bones start to weaken. Basically, our bodies are built for Earth, where we're constantly feeling the pull of gravity. So if we're serious about living in space long term, we'll need some way to fake gravity, something we call artificial gravity. Gravity is just a force between objects that have mass. Earth pulls you down because both you and Earth have mass, simple enough. But you don't feel gravity directly because it's pulling on every part of your body equally. You only really notice it when something changes, like in an elevator. Think about it. When the elevator suddenly starts going up, you feel a bit heavier for a second. That's because it's accelerating upwards, adding to the gravity you already feel. When it slows down near your floor, you feel lighter. Your actual weight didn't change, but your apparent weight did. And that's the key idea behind artificial gravity. Now, here's where it gets cool. SpaceX wants to use this concept to make a space station with artificial gravity. And they're planning to build it out of something you've probably heard of, Starship. Yep, the same Starship they've been launching and landing. The plan is to link several starships together in a giant ring. When that ring spins, it creates artificial gravity, kind of like a carnival ride or those spinning space stations you've seen in sci-fi movies. The rotation makes people inside feel like they're being pulled down, even though they're floating in orbit. This rotating station could help solve a ton of the health issues astronauts face in zero-g like muscle loss and bone weakening. The best part is, they already have a bunch of systems in place to support it. Super Heavy to launch it, Dragon to carry people, Starlink for communication, and more. Now using Starship like this might sound wild, but it's not a brand new idea. Back in the day, NASA even considered turning leftover space shuttle fuel tanks into space habitats. So, repurposing Starship for this kind of role actually makes a lot of sense. For one, Starship is huge. Even the current version has more room inside than the entire International Space Station. And Elon recently said the crewed version of Starship 4 will have over 1,000 cubic meters of pressurized volume, about 10% more than the ISS. Since it was already designed to carry people on long trips to Mars, it's kind of perfect for long-term space living. Another big plus is that Starship is fully reusable. If they can convert it into a station that can return to Earth, get a quick tune-up, and fly again, that could save a ton of money. Plus, it's made of stainless steel, not exactly meant for space stations, but it turns out to be a great fit. It's durable, handles crazy temperatures, resists corrosion, and can take a few micrometeorite hits without falling apart. And here's the cherry on top. SpaceX is working on making starships fast and cheap to build. So if everything goes smoothly, this future space station could end up costing way less than the $150 billion it took to build the ISS and offer way more space and flexibility. So now that we've covered the concept and all the cool possibilities it offers, the real question is, how viable is it? When we design the inside of a spacecraft, we often pretend there's gravity, even though there isn't. This helps during pre-launch activities, but mostly it's because humans are just more comfortable in a gravity-like environment. We're used to coffee staying in the cup, walking on floors, and knowing where down is. That familiarity makes it easier to design interiors people can live and work in comfortably. That's why artificial gravity is considered in space station design, not just for comfort, but because it also makes systems like water handling, waste management, and life support much simpler. Back in the early days of space research, people were skeptical about artificial gravity created by spinning the station, called rotogravity. Early studies suggested people couldn't handle it. It made them dizzy or sick. But later research showed that if people are introduced gradually to a rotating environment, they can actually get used to it. 
We still need more research, especially about how fast people can adapt and how long that adaptation lasts. But overall, rotation-based artificial gravity seems doable. There are three things the designer of this kind of station needs to keep in mind. How fast the station spins, how stable it is, and how the movement inside it, like head turns or walking, can throw people off. How much artificial gravity you feel in a spinning station depends on how fast it spins and how big the circle is, the spin radius. But spinning too fast can mess with your sense of balance. For example, if someone turns their head quickly while the station is spinning, their inner ears might send confusing signals to their brain, making them feel dizzy or even nauseous. Over time, though, the body can adapt, especially if the rotation speed is increased slowly. Some tests have shown that people can adjust to spinning rates of 10 to 12 revolutions per minute, though we'd probably only need about half that speed in a real station. Bigger spin radii help too. A 50-foot radius can give you about a quarter of Earth's gravity, 0.24 g, which might be enough to keep things comfortable. Interestingly, how fast the outer edge of the station is moving, tangential velocity, can also affect things. For example, walking against the spin can reduce the gravity you feel under your feet. That could make simple tasks like drinking coffee or pouring liquids a bit weird, especially at lower gravity levels. Previous studies suggested that 0.3 grams is probably the sweet spot. It's enough to walk upright and move things around easily, without needing a massive spinning structure. Though astronauts on the moon seem to do fine with just 0.17 g, going a bit higher might make life easier inside the station. Another thing to worry about is wobble, kind of like a spinning top that starts to tilt. This wobble, called nutation, can shift the direction of gravity slightly, which could make things feel off or even cause discomfort. If the wobble is slow and the gravity is strong, it's probably not a big deal. But if the station wobbles too fast or too far, it might start to mess with people's sense of direction and balance, especially in lower gravity conditions. Some early experiments showed that mild wobbling didn't really affect performance much, but those tests used full Earth gravity, 1g, and predictable motion. In a real space station, with less gravity and unexpected movement, the effects could be worse, and we still need more research to fully understand what people can handle. Now, there's also something called the Coriolis force. It sounds complicated, but it's basically what happens when you move around in a spinning environment. If you suddenly shift direction, especially up or down, it can throw off your sense of motion and make you dizzy. The good news is that smart design can reduce this problem. If the floor of the station runs along the same direction as the spin axis, then people won't experience much Coriolis effect during normal movement. It only really kicks in when someone climbs or descends, changing their distance from the center of rotation, or moves too fast. Even then, slow and deliberate motions help a lot. Plus, nodding your head, instead of shaking it side to side, tends to cause less disorientation. Tests have even shown that people can move their arms quickly and press buttons without problems, so it's not like people will be working in slow motion. As long as the station is laid out carefully, the Coriolis force shouldn't be a big deal. Besides, turning a spacecraft like Starship into a full-on space station sounds exciting, but it comes with a bunch of technical challenges. For starters, Starship is still a spacecraft at its core, which means a big chunk of it isn't usable for living or working space. That's because a large portion is taken up by engines and massive propellant tanks. Almost half the ship, actually. There have been some ideas floating around about repurposing the methane tanks into habitable space, but that's a lot easier said than done. It would involve major structural changes, and doing all that work while in orbit would be incredibly complicated. Then there's the issue of connectivity. Traditional space stations have all kinds of external add-ons, like big solar panels for power and multiple docking ports for cargo ships and crew vehicles. Starship, as it stands, doesn't have that kind of modular setup. Sure, its large size is a huge advantage, but without permanent docking systems or external support structures, using it as a long-term station might be a tough sell. The thing is, Starship was designed to be an efficient, aerodynamic rocket. That's what makes it great for launching and landing. But the moment you start adding things like solar arrays and docking arms, you start losing some of that efficiency. So, while the potential is definitely there, turning Starship into a true space station would mean some big design overhauls and extra infrastructure. At least for now, it's probably better suited for what it was built to be, a powerful, 
reusable spacecraft. A space station with artificial gravity might actually come from a different player, and possibly sooner than you'd expect. California-based Vast Space has some pretty bold plans. The company is aiming to launch a commercial space station called Haven 2 into low Earth orbit by 2028. If successful, it could offer astronauts a place to stay once the International Space Station, ISS, is retired in 2030. In doing this, VAST is stepping into the race to build the next generation of low-orbit stations, a race that NASA is supporting through partnerships with private companies. But what really sets VAST apart is its long-term goal, building a space station with artificial gravity. We know humans can survive in weightlessness for a year or so, though it's not exactly comfortable, says Max Hyatt, VAST's CEO. But maybe lunar or Martian gravity is enough for people to live comfortably long-term. The only way to find out is by building stations with artificial gravity, and that's what we're aiming for. Back in December, VAST announced a partnership with SpaceX to launch two missions to the ISS as stepping stones toward its first station, Haven 1, planned for launch in 2025. These missions don't have set dates yet, but they'll be part of NASA's private astronaut program, which is designed to help build a sustainable space economy in low Earth orbit. For VAST, this is just the beginning of a long-term business strategy. Creating a station with artificial gravity could take 10 to 20 years and more money than we currently have, Hout admits. But to prove we're serious and capable, we're using our founders' resources to send four people on a SpaceX Dragon to Haven 1 in 2025. They'll spend two weeks on board, then come back safely. It's our way of showing NASA we can deliver, before anyone else does. All in all, artificial gravity seems like a very promising idea for future space stations. It makes daily life in space more Earth-like, and helps with the design of important systems. That said, there's still a lot we don't fully understand, especially how people react to all these forces over time in a real spinning environment. Earth-based tests help, but the best way to learn more is by doing experiments in orbit. There's still a lot to figure out before we can say for sure what the perfect artificial gravity setup looks like.